What's going on, y'all? My name's Bless. I've been surrounded by hip hop my entire life and literally grew up in the music business. Behind the scenes, beyond the music, the industry, and the streets, these are our stories. Join me as we explore the culture that defines our generation. This is the moment of truth. Episode 21, Moment of Truth Podcast. I'm your boy, Bless. Let me know to the left. And today, we got the homie Lou Phelps in the building. Mm -hmm. Big round of applause. Big round of applause. Thank you for coming. We've been talking for a while about making this happen. I'm glad we were finally able to, my brother. Oh, yeah, man. It's a pleasure. Pleasure to be here. (laughs) Thank you for coming. Let's jump right into it. Let's jump right into it. Yeah. Who is Lou Phelps? Where does the name come from? Let's start there. All right. So... Um, Lou Phelps, basically, I'm a rapper from a rapper, producer, DJ, tour manager, freaking, I do everything pretty much. There you go. From um, Longueuil. I'm not going to say Montreal anymore. Longueuil, you know. South, South yeah, Shore. Yeah, Got to rip the town. South man. Bronx. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from, uh, from Longueuil. And um, basically, Lou Phelps came from... So I had plenty of names growing up. I started rapping at the age of like 12, like seriously. I, st- I, I took it seriously at the age of like um, 16. And at 16, my name was Louis P. But I know so many rappers online that are named Louis P. I was just like, I have to switch it up. Sounds like a lot of guys in the South <laughs> might be named Louis P. <laughs> Yo, so many guys, <laughs> so many guys. And then I was like, what type of like... I like the the whole idea of having a name that sounds like an actual name, yeah. you know, like not a not a stage name or, or something. Or a title. Yeah. So my real name is Louis Philippe Celestin. And I'm like, how can I use Louis Philippe and make it a, a stage name, you know? Because mm-hmm. Louis Philippe is kind of French. It sounds French a bit, you know, you know French Canadian. So I'm like, all right, so I definitely want Lou in there. Lou Phil, Lou Phil's. I'm like Lou Phillips, Philip, Lou Phelps. Oh, that sounds good. Lou Phelps has a ring to good. it. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna I'm stick with this name. So. Lou Phelps was like a, he was an athlete, right? Michael Phelps. Michael Phelps. Michael sorry, Phelps, Michael yeah. Phelps. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He was an Olympian, the swimmer, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, most, I think he most gold medals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Phelps, I was always like, yo, that's that's an I always like, you know. Yeah, yeah. He holds the record for um, the most uh, wins and or medals for. Um, Fucking. I think he's most medals. Yeah, I think he's medals, most medals yeah. straight up. Like he just has that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe. I'm not. I'm not sure though. But. Yeah. So it has that whole we are the we are the champions dip set vibe much, to it. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Makes sense. So, oh my bad. So yeah, that's uh that's about it. So that's how the name came about. So yeah. Um, talk to us about your background. I mean, do you come from a musical background, family wise? I mean, everybody knows that your brother yeah. uh, is a well known figure in this music game. Yep. Uh, shout out your bro, but did it did it come from your parents? Did you know it was it was it a musical home you guys grew up in? Um, well, my dad was really like artistic, so he used to paint. He used to like like draw and like fucking write. Um, but um, when he used to work as a as a taxi, because we're Haitians, you know Haitians love to you know what I'm saying the easiest job is to drive people around. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, he used to taxi, and before. Before going to work at night, he would blast, like, blast um, compa, you know, like, course, Haitian Haitian music. And it's, like, growing up with, like, compa as a, as, a, as a kid, you're just, like, at first you don't like it. Then you start to appreciate it. And then my dad used to, used to always play some, like, Bob Marley, some freaking mm. Ella Fitzgerald, some... Mm-hmm. Uh, Louis Armstrong, the greats, all, you know, the like greats, the foundation. all the great, yeah, all the great like jazzy, like soulful music. Well, not necessarily soulful, but you know, all the the good stuff. Pretty mm-hmm. much, he used to play that all the time at the house, and like when we like, like when he used to pick us up at at school or whatever, he used to play that. And then my sister took um, singing classes. My brother and I took um, piano classes, and I took um, trumpet classes. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's pretty much the family history. Well, actually, I heard recently that my like my grandpa's uh, grandpa's brother on my mom's side is was a well known singer. I don't know. I don't know who he is, but hmm. apparently he was a well known singer in like in France or something. Hmm. 
You got to so, get on the ancestry.ca and like, yeah. figure that one out. That's a yeah, good one yeah. to know. Yeah. But Very yeah, cool. man, pretty much it's like, it's just like, I think it runs in the blood. My my uncle plays in a, in a compa band, like, like everybody loves music in my family pretty much. So it's kind of like, you know, effortless. It's embedded in you. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. So you started at 16 years old. How much older is your brother than you? What's the two what, years? Two years, two years older. older. Yeah. So I imagine you guys must have kind of sort of started at the same time. I mean, when you think about it, not really, because I used to rap for fun, really for fun, like not even write words, like literally just like gibber over mm-hmm. like um, money, power, respect from like you know uh, classic rap. Yeah, 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 from like Lil Kim or whatever, and then. Um, like 50 Cent, Candy Shop, and all that, just like mm-hmm. do covers, just to get the flow going. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just like the idea of rapping because like my mom didn't necessarily have money at the time and like we couldn't get clothes and I was trying to find an identity identity and mm-hmm, shit. Mm-hmm. I was like, all right, let me try to let me try this rap thing. And basically, I, basically 50 Cent started it all for me. I was like, all right, I want to be like 50. Yeah, he was the biggest rapper on man, planet Earth in those man, years. I loved him. He was a superhero. Oh, He's still great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. But I mean, the impact of Fifty when he popped was like no other. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. there, there, there was, there was, you know, quite a few guys that had the stature of Fifty, but I feel like few hit that that peak as yeah, fast. Yeah, there was a bunch. Like Jay Z used like, but it took time for Jay to get there. Yeah, you know, it was, it was, was a bidding he, war for Fifty. Fifty yeah. feels he had like everybody yeah. waiting for him yeah, and exactly. saying like, like we. Gonna, we knew like there was no way this wasn't going to be the biggest album in hip hop, mm. no matter what. That anticipation, that's the word I'm looking for. That anticipation was hard to match. Man. Honestly, I'm going to be honest with y'all. It's Please. like when Get Rich or Die Trying came out, I didn't know anything about 50 Cent. Like my sister put me onto this. And it's like, I didn't know. Like the only thing I knew was like Music Plus, you know? like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's what I used to watch. And like they used to like showcase 50 Cent all the time. Yeah. Or like Jim Jones or like Cameron and shit mm. like that. Not even Cameron, honestly. Just Jim Jones with the ball and ball. Yeah. yeah. 07. And it's like, that's all I know. Like that's all I knew back then, like 50 Cent. So I'm like, the first rap guy that I remember watching on TV was 50 Cent. So it's like, damn. Like I love this whole like culture. Like, the way he dresses, his attitude is like the long he looks like a bo- the, yeah, like he looks like a boss. Vest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bulletproof vest, the do rag, and all that. The, yo, but like, see, a lot of people don't realize that vest obviously became like a uh, you know a stylish thing yeah. that a lot of you know brands and people emulated. But at the time, Fifty had big beef with serious dudes in New York, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was walking around with the vest underneath his clothes all the time because yeah. he you know he popped so quick that he knew that you know he'd be a great you know probably target yeah, for somebody to come at so then i guess he just figured fuck it i'll just use it to my advantage and put it on top of the gear Mm. and just rock but he needed i'm sure he needed those vests when he was doing those early performances yeah yeah. but yeah man um so yeah 50 was the biggest was the biggest shit on planet earth uh that 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 two years i remember the first time i ever heard in the club i was in the club in miami with guru (laughs) on vacation that's crazy r.i.p my brother guru god bless him and um we went to some random club in Miami. We were on vacation. Mm. And when we heard that, boom, boom, we just looked at each other and we're like, oh my God, <laughs> this, this is going to be like the biggest record. On like, and to this day, wonder, it broke records. I actually like, wonder like how people felt about hearing the instrumental. Because I remember hearing the instrumental. I didn't think it was like that crazy. Because I'm like more of a sample dude. But and the like, thing was in the club sonically, the way they mixed that shit, mm. it just knocked so fucking hard. I mean, me and Guru weren't super into West Coast production yeah. either. You know what I mean? We were really into the boom bap shit and yeah, you know, all the yeah, typical yeah. shit you would think. But when we heard it for the first time actually in a club... It was exciting. Damn. We knew that it was going to be one of the biggest records in him. And still to this day, it, I mean, it's. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's people still play it till this day. It's like a birthday anthem, pretty yeah, much. Literally. Like everybody listens to that when, when it's their birthday. But yeah, man, like, I don't know, man. I feel like 50s beats, it's like, let me ask you a question, man. How do you mm. feel about. Actually, I'm, I won't ask the question. <laughs> please, please, please. How do you feel about like Eminem and like, like all this, like, shady um like the shady era you know how do you feel about them hmm, how i do feel you like mean? i never connected with eminem ever in my life okay so 
He's getting a lot of slack these days. So I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll say it like this, and I, and I totally agree and understand where you're coming from. Yeah. I think people need to separate two important factors when it comes to uh, taking in music and making music. Yeah. There are artists who make incredible songs. They make big records, yeah, like yeah, 50 yeah. made big songs. And sometimes that doesn't always correlate to being the most wordy or the most super lyrical. I think Eminem is a genius when it comes to penning rhymes, but mm. I agree with you, not all of his music resonated with me yeah. the way Nas did or the way Gangstar did or the way yeah. Biggie did on, you know, so on and so forth. Yeah. So I understand when I hear people like you saying, M's dope, you gotta respect him as a lyricist, yeah, yeah, but I don't fucking love his music. Yeah, no, I get I, it. I feel like I never ever like liked one of his songs. You know what I mean? I would have to say the eight mile shit, lose yourself. I fuck with that song. I fuck mm. with the the Beer stand stuff. the stand record, and don't forget, don't forget, uh, my man's born in '94. So you're coming in, you're coming in at a time, <laughs> yeah. But you're you're coming yeah. in at a time where like um, Eminem is is not even Eminem yet, but he's he's you're five six years old when he's peaking. Yeah, you know what I mean when he's on like yeah, like the, yeah, like yeah. the good day. What 27 is when he got signed? Uh, something like that, probably. Right. So. The only thing you're getting is like after the after the fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're getting oldies, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, I mean, I, I, I just yeah. think that it depends what brand of hip hop you're into. I don't think anybody debates that Eminem is a lyrical genius. Yeah. No, but, he's saying he's okay. not feeling it ever, and I can I can understand the same way. I don't I don't feel KRS One ever. The only because I wasn't around for it. I feel like the only song of Eminem, like the only verse of Eminem that I could actually remember, is the Forever Joint with Drake. Mm. his verse yeah i was like okay i was impressed and then um well what about this, renegade um, with jay-z yeah renegade all, you know see there was good points verses. where you were like but, oh but this guy's do yeah. you get it it's like i get it this like the I, I feel like the beats that he rapped on didn't complement his style in my opinion but like i don't disagree with you yeah. i don't disagree with you but i think part of that was the label where they're like look if you don't do that slapstick humor that bam, 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 yeah, bam, yeah, yeah. if you don't do that we don't get a guaranteed win yeah so they kind of forced him into that mode. But maybe that was his style too maybe he's just like rapping on these i think he i think he was probably in the studio with dre he fell upon this slapstick humor shit yeah and it worked And they were taking no risks after that. Like yeah, you had yeah. to have that, Christina, you know, Britney, cro comical yeah, shit as your first single much. because that made him really unique. But I think as as an MC, he has so much more to offer. Mm. But I agree with you that would you listen to two hours of Eminem's no, catalog straight never. at any never. party at any event? Never. No. Would you listen to two hours of Jay? Absolutely. Of two hours of Nas, yeah. do it all the time. Yeah. Two hours of Gangstar, fuck yeah. And I understand where that sentiment comes from. Yeah. But when you put him on a forever record or you put him on Renegade, he does more than hold his own. He kind of destroys shit. Yeah. Yeah, so he's an anomaly. Lyrically. lyrically. Lyrically, I'll give yeah, it to him. No. He's an anomaly. I'm, I, I'm with him. I'm with him. I'm like... I don't disagree. I, I'm kind of over <laughs> it. I don't disagree. But he had his moments. He did. Yeah, definitely. But when people say Eminem's the greatest rapper of all time, oh, with all no, due respect, I'm, I'm sorry, I respect no. his talent, I'm sorry, but, but no. I, don't, I, don't, I don't feel that way either. It's the same thing for like, no disrespect to Lil Wayne, but I feel like Lil Wayne, I never really got to connect with him. I agree with you totally. Of the, Again, he's another, he yeah. had his moments. I could see he's prolific. I feel and like I'm out safe a lot of music. with the, like, I'm really like with my choices, whether it's like food or whether it's like, music or whatever i'm i'm really safe like what sounds good to the ear yeah it's all right but Sonic. i feel you, you you remember like the carter three era or the mm -hmm. carter two mm -hmm. when he used to when he started using the auto-tune mm -hmm. and like we hated it well i hated it <laughs> i don't know about you guys <laughs> but like i feel like dying <laughs> right Bro, it's just a different nah, guy softer. I, like i can't do it man I, it I was you know that. what it was also like what lemmy was saying sometimes that's the moment in music that's happening. Mm. And sometimes you're ahead of the wave. Yeah. And sometimes you're just on the wave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel like he was like really just on that wave, like strapped in. So for the moment, it I had this like colossal. He started that wave low key. Low key, it was uh, T-Pain. Yeah. And then everybody, it's actually interesting you bring him up because the last guest that we had on was Play From Play and Skills and they produced, they won a Grammy for the Carter. Mm. They did, um, 
the Got Money uh, T Pain, oh. uh, Little Wayne featuring T Pain. Yeah, 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 he did that. But you know, it was just at that year, nobody was bigger than Little yeah, Wayne. Yeah. And I think that is very much a part of hip hop, the time period, because it 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 speaks to the context. Yeah, yeah. but not everything stands the test of time yeah. like you listen to reasonable doubt or illmatic or the obvious classics yeah. it stood the test of time for whatever reason mm. but let's not forget a lot of those albums sales wise were pretty slept on yeah in the year they came out so it's art it's right a, it's a popularity thing in my opinion when when it comes to sales it's like whether the label wants to push your your music or not true it's not necessarily because like i feel like um labels have all the power in the world mm -hmm. to make somebody big mm -hmm. like they'll decide who makes anybody big right well it depends how much they spend and if they start spending with no limit you're gonna be up there and yeah. when they stop spending that's why you always say yo what happened to this guy what happened to yeah the label stopped investing exactly period yeah so i think at, at the era that lil wayne started getting big birdman already had all that money so he put all of his money into Lil Wayne to make sure that the he label... put all of Universal's money yeah into Lil much. Wayne <laughs> pretty much. There was a famous story. Um, I had a meeting back in the day with a cat uh, in New York who originally was the one who gave uh, cash money their label deal, mm. and he told me that they came in the office and they already had mad paper and they just were like, "Yo, here's a bag of money. We don't need your money." And that's how they negotiated their original deal, mm. which was very favorable. Yeah. And then once they did the sales, you know, obviously Universal put all of their resources. Yeah, yeah, and when yeah, Universal yeah. puts all their resources, that's I tend to resources. agree with you. It doesn't matter whether it's Wayne's project or Drake's project yeah. or Nicki Minaj's project, they had all the resources. Exactly. And that, that speaks to the massive success of all the young money guys that came after Little Wayne. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty um, much. Let me ask you, who does really resonate and stand out you know hip-hop wise who really inspired you to to spit who inspired me to spit who was the opposite of an eminem that you didn't connect with who did you really connect with um a lot of people man like i, I would say the one that got me into what i'm doing what i was doing when i started was mm. pretty much mf doom mm. mf doom was like a god to me interesting but it's like now that I look at what I listened to, mm -hmm. I'm like, it's MF Doom, but it was a mix of, and people might think I'm crazy for this one, but I really love Big Sean's like wordplay and the way he he uses uh, his metaphors. And interesting you know, that you say that. When Big Sean first came out, I was very skeptical. Yeah, and he got better and better and better. Yeah, yeah, and that's I, what I'm saying. And I think I mentioned this to you, Lemmy. Mm -hmm. He has a record semi recently, like last year, I think, featuring M. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where yeah. I felt like he killed M. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, Big Sean. But Eminem's verse was. I'm, I'm but sorry, he, but M, his but verse was amazing, though. Big Sean's M, verse was crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Eminem's verse, I don't know, man. It wasn't, it wasn't your cup of tea. <laughs> Eminem's verse like, is I won't, never. I won't the... flavor, I won't savor, something like that. Like, it's like. Uh. It's not the I it's mean, not the thing some, anymore. Some 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 artists need just need to stop at some point. Like even Jay Z, like Jay is like the 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 goal to my like in my opinion. I I would agree. He's like the greatest of all time, but he has to stop. Like stop doing verses. Start working on other stuff or like producing. Like you no, know, I don't know. Like start a record label or some like you already have Rockefeller or whatever Rock Nation. Rock Nation, yeah. But um, I don't know, man. Like focus on that instead of like rapping, like. We don't need another album. Like we don't like. Imagine if Jay would have left with Black Album. Imagine as, as he claimed he, he would have been. Going to. Yeah, he would have yeah. been like literally like no contest, the best rapper of all time. Now there is contest. Like you mm, know what I mean. Like, I know what you mean. You get what I mean. I know what you mean. It's like kind of you know going out on your highest note. Yeah. Versus, but. I mean, I think Jay kind of just does it for sport yeah, because he much. loves he loves the culture so much. I mean, it's certainly not for the money, yeah. you know, and it gets to a point where you can't be more successful than 50 in his pinnacle or yeah. Jay in his pinnacle or even M in his pinnacle. So why bother? Yeah. They say, you know, we swam through shit and went through hell to get here. We survived. Yeah. So yeah. now we just like hitting the gym and just throwing, you know, just 
just shooting around in the gym just for fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. at the end of the day, it's art, right? So, you know, for a lot of people, maybe it's therapeutic. Yeah. Because Jay is killing it in the business realm. He's been killing it for yeah. decades. But yeah. one thing we do have to give Jay is you've never heard a whack verse from him on anything. It's true, though. It's true. <laughs> you got you to gotta give him that. You know somebody else that doesn't get mentioned enough that you cannot tell me one whack verse he's ever put on anything? Fabulous. Fab, to me, it's like, needs to be rated higher. Yeah, no, definitely. He's an he's a amazing rapper. It's just like, I feel like not... I don't know. I, maybe it's a label thing. He maybe never got that super thing. light on him that he deserved, but... Every fab track that was a single was amazing. Yeah, but you know what you're gonna get. You know but he, exactly but, what but you're gonna incredible. get. Incredible. Whether that's, it's yeah. whether it's Maybe mailed in, that 16 is gonna be the same. 16 is gonna have the same five topics. They're nah, all sick, bro. They're all sick. Maybe that's what it is. Analyze actually. it deeper, man. Yeah. Listen to any time he's on anything. You're I put like, him with Jada Kiss oh. in my top oh, twenty. J- Jada Kiss. Top twenty. J- New York. J- Jada Kiss gotta like, be up there. Yeah. Yeah. Jada's gotta honestly, be up there. Honestly, Jada Kiss in terms of lyricism. It's like top five to me. You know who else needs to get mentioned more? Styles and this is out of, well, Styles is nice. Mm. Black Dot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Black Dot annihilates everything yeah, 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 he's on. Yeah, yeah. And another guy that I, I guess maybe the Roots overshadowed him, right? Because mm-hmm. the Roots yeah, is yeah, so, yeah. you know, in demand, whether mm-hmm. it's, you know, live unplugged shit they do with other artists like yeah. Jay or whoever to Jimmy Fallon. And they're so... Um, like artistically respected, yeah. you know what I mean? That people forget that, who the fuck did you put Black Thought on a track with that Black Thought doesn't kill? Like, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Did you hear his verse on the, the Benny the Butcher joint? Nah. Cool. I, didn't, I didn't listen Great. to the Benny the cool. Butcher album yet. There's a Benny Butcher Black Thought record? There's a couple guys on that track. There's a couple more guys on there. I think there's one, just them two though. Oh yeah? The one okay. that I'm thinking of, I believe so. It's okay. pretty recent. Uh, for everybody listening, go do yourself a favor. Just mm. put in Benny Butcher featuring Black Thought. Oh my mm. God. You forget that the man's got to be in his uh, mid 40s yeah. by now. And this guy is really, really, really a beast. Um, so Jay, Jay was inspiring to you. Yeah. Who else? Jay, MF Doom. Uh, MF Doom. Um, Give me some know, obscure man, like, shit that, 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 that you drew from. Because I know crown, you and your crowns for kings, deep. Black Thought. I know you guys go deep in the crates. I don't know, man. Um, that inspired me to rap. Or just shit like, what do you personally love? Like, what do you fuck with? Like, what right now, to you? I feel like back in the day, it used to be, like, I used to have, like, different, uh, I had a different musical taste than now, definitely. Mm. How but, so? What was the evolution? Like, I used to listen to Soldier Boy and, like, you know, the, the high school mm-hmm. music mm-hmm. and... That could probably help you when it comes to production, though. Because mm. sonically, that shit was working on a, whole, on a whole other level. I guess. I, I mean, don't know. I mean, I don't think him, like I don't fucking think him, crazy. That's, I feel that, like that, my favorite producers, if, if we were talking about producing, my favorite producers are um, Pharrell, Timberland, Madlib, um, Jay Dilla, and um, who else could I... like? probably kanye back in the day so i would say you're more of um your ear is very eclectic yeah. you like the more eclectic yeah, yeah, yeah. musical you know harmonies and all that shit exactly great i don't interview. like the i don't like the the simple shit yeah like you remember when gucci man used to be hot in like yeah. the 2000s yeah. you know, the zaytoven shit there. i was like nah it's not for me yeah it's too simple it's too simple some people i think resi- uh, resonate with the simplistic shit because it's kind of like a purposeful ignorance. Mm. And it's something relatable I when your that. palate isn't refined. They like the ignorance of it. I like the ignorant lyrics yeah. over dope Musical beats. production. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'm, I'm down to listen to like some, uh, some like, damn, I don't even know. I don't really listen to ignorant music anymore, but But you could day, see how a, bit, a lot yeah. of maybe younger cats could, you know, fall in love with hip hop on some ignorant, really watered down right. shit. And yeah. then maybe like grow into understanding like Pharrell and Tim are fucking musical geniuses. Like, yeah. let's be serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, great interview. You should check out. I don't know if you guys saw it. Uh, Pharrell, Pharrell and, Rick and Rick Rubin. Yeah. I didn't see it yet, man. They I'm talk about, it it's interesting sure. because they talk about like sonically envisioning a record. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. And they talk about how they feel like uh, um, a real producer's job is to be like a catalyst, to be like a receiver. And, you know, the music doesn't belong to them. The chords don't. It's all inspired by God knows what. Mm. And they're channeling. And they're channeling and translating it into a record. So the way that they look at it is very three-dimensional. It's like a mood thing, pretty much. Right? Like, I started, like, when I started producing, I didn't really understand. And I tried producing, I don't know how many, like, years ago, like, four or five years ago. And I just got into it now when I started smoking weed. Hmm. And it's like... When I smoke and I make beats, like you close your eyes and you freaking listen to the chords that you're playing, and you're like, you could tell what's right. even if, even though I don't have any music, like I don't know anything about music theory, mm. but like just the sound of the chords, mm-hmm. the way you play it, has an effect on the way that the, the mood, mood of the yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's more of of a mood thing more than like. Like, okay, I need to do this. I need, to, you know, when it's like robot, like it needs to have a flavor. It needs to have a soul. And when, mm-hmm. when it has a soul, it has a mood. And when it has a mood, that's what gives the, the color to the, to the production. That's and right. like, that's pretty much what I'm doing right now. I'm You're like, tapped in, bro. Yeah, man. You're tapped in. That's what it is. <laughs> well, weed's, a, weed's a beautiful thing, eh? <laughs> yeah, you know, sure. when you're in the studio, you're kind of just taking wild shots in the dark mm. and then you're, you, it connects and you're like, okay, that's interesting. Mm. And that magic is not tangible. You just kind of mm. know what you're looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're just wild. Let me, you know, you're going through thousands of synth sounds. Yeah. And then there's just one that note one that's like, like oh, yeah, and you're yeah. like, okay, it did something to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when the timing is right, it come, becomes something yeah. special or sometimes it just doesn't. <laughs> yeah, true. You know? Have you ever tried producing or? Um, well, yeah, I, 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 I co-produce most of my stuff with my partner. Okay, right. Shout out Mano Sound Machine. You no know, matter. we do everything from A to Z together. Yeah. You know, um, you know, right. obviously he, physically does it with his hands but i sit with him through the entire process yeah. we come up with ideas and concepts together we go back and forth and then mm. i write once we're comfortable with where the music is so right. i've been for the last 10 years involved in every single aspect of making anything we made mm. so Dope. you know Dope. but you know i'm lucky enough to have a partner in production that understands my vision and I understand his. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. by sometimes I annoy him because by the time I'm telling him to do it, he's like, don't even say it. I'm already doing yeah. it. <laughs> like, he's like literally like, shut up. I'm already doing it. And yeah. I'm like, all right, all right, you got it. You got it. You know, I feel like you and your bro probably have a similar relationship. Uh, yeah. I mean, like K, the way K does his beats, I don't even know how he does it anymore, but it's speak like, to me a little bit about that. Um, uh, was it your brother uh, who inspired you to move into the production or was that just a natural progression for you? Um, honestly, the, the person who started, like made me want to produce my own beats where it was like uh, Tyler, Tyler, the creator. Mm-hmm. I listened to the Igor album and I was like, yo, like, no, nah, I have to start. I have to, you know, and it's like, I could do it myself. Only like, I just need to put the time into it. And if I put my time into it, Everything's gonna be all right. Hell yeah! But bro, Tyler, Tyler's album was like eye opening for me. Like, it was like, a big one. Yeah, but K, the way K produced, every time K produced something for me, it was always like him making a batch of beats that both of us love because mm-hmm. we have like sort of like the same ear when it comes to music. Mm-hmm. And like, he makes the beats and then he shows me what I would sound good on. Mm-hmm. What he would see you on. Yeah, pretty much. And then that's how it was. It's just like a batch of beats. But I haven't had beats from K from like so long, like like at least two years. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the last project I was working on was like in 2017, 2018. And like that was the last time I got beats from him. And it's still beat from, from uh, still beats from 2017. That's what's crazy. But uh, yeah, man. Like, but you know, sometimes we're making the shit and it feels dated to us, but the rest of the world hasn't heard it. Yeah. So as long as it doesn't sound like the, you know, the, the drug yeah, programming no. is weird, there's no such thing as it new does, or like, old. I mean. The thing with K's music, it sounds timeless. Yeah. It's like, it's like, you can't really put a genre on it either. Yeah. And it sounds timeless. But so you could tell, I mean, I'm sure your brother must be very inspired by like the Jay Dillas and, and that yeah, kind definitely. of shit. Cause just of the, the whole cadence of his shit. Mm-hmm. And you're right. That sound is super timeless. Yeah. So yeah. I really, 
would challenge anybody to be like, this is 2015. Yeah, yeah, This yeah. is 2019. I like, don't. his latest record, um, I think, was Dysfunctional. The instrumental is from literally 2017, like, early 2017. So it's like, damn. Like, what does he have in store for us, right? You know what I'm saying? What is he doing right now? Where is your brother living now? I, I bumped into him in the summer. Uh, St. Henry. Oh, he's yeah, still yeah, he's back yeah, in he's town. Yeah, he's, he's not he's not in the states. Uh, no, no, no. Much anymore. He's, he's doing back and forth a lot. Yeah, he's still in uh, Montreal. That's the best move, though. Is you go when they pay you. Yeah, Why are you going much. to the states? Otherwise, like if there's a bag, you go. Yeah, you come well, back. It depends, you know, where you're at in your. Country. I don't want to. I don't want to go like, to the states ever unless. It depends. Yeah, it, it actually depends where you're at in your life. Actually, it's, right. it's true because it's like. K doesn't necessarily need to, need to make contacts, you know. Of like course, if you want to make contacts, you have to get. It's out not like he needs to hang out, out in LA twenty four seven to be invited to sessions. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's yeah. in demand, yeah. and people will contact him. Plus, technology of the last you know seven years, yeah, everybody's on social. Beat, you know? <laughs> but he's <laughs> on social media, and I can contact, and you can contact anybody in the world. Exactly. It's just if they want to hit you back. Exactly. So exactly. Yeah. you don't really need to be on the ground every day like yeah. once upon a time we had to be you know hanging out at D&D studios we need to ha be hanging out in these legendary hip hop studios mm. just to like make contacts and to be like oh shit let me play you this beat accepted we're, we're working next door yeah. you know what I'm saying and then they're like oh, okay what's up like you really people had to kind of um, feel your vibe to want to work with you. Yeah, you have to be likable somewhat. You yeah. know now it's I mean? a number. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know your your story, like the backstory of Bless. But I'm like, I feel like the first time I saw you was well, I didn't see you, but you know me. I'm saying '90s baby. Yeah, fucking Def Jam. Def Jam uh, fight for fight New for New York. I was like, who's this white <laughs> white <laughs> dude uh, that that fights in the in the in the game? And I'm like, I don't know who told me that you were from Montreal. And I was like, yo, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> somebody from Montreal made it? And it's like, I always looked at you like as a, as like a, a, a goal. Not to surpass necessarily, but just like, at least I need to get my shit on a video game. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like inspire kids. That was the kids. bar. That just was like, the bar. Yeah, the pretty much inspire kids to, to like, I don't know, just like. Have kids look up to, to, to me or whatever, you know? Thank so, you, bro. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Like, can you explain the process behind that, man? <laughs> How does it get in a video yeah. game? Welcome up. Shit, you got two <laughs> hours to start a new podcast. <laughs> um, it was a very... Um, the way the video game came about was random. But mm. what led up to the video game mm. was, you know, a long fucking process, which right. totally speaks to what we're talking about, that, you know, it wasn't like... You know, somebody discovered me on YouTube or whatever. You know, I was going back and forth to New York for years. You know, of course, working with Guru and the whole Gangstar crew. Mm. Um, oh, by the way, quick little plug. Make sure you check out the new Gangstar album. One of the best yet out now. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know... I was just going back and forth, like between finishing high school, I would go on the weekend and come back or, you know, go high for the school, summer. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy. I you start, camping I, out outside the labels, like trying to get someone's ear so you could spit yeah. them on the street. I in started New York. at 15, like professionally New York trying to, to be in That's the music to business. That's crazy. So I was going to New York, battling people on the street in front of <laughs> Def Jam and Cyphers, <laughs> LL, putting money down. Like I really did the school of hard knocks, mm. you know? And, um, I was fortunate enough to have a manager who believed in me from Queens mm. who, you know, work with Run DMC and, and Russell right. Simmons early right. in the hip hop shit. And, you know, he kind of like took me under his wing and would just introduce me to whoever he knew from the scene in New York. Mm. So after years of going back and forth to make a long story short, I ended up linking up with Guru. He signed me to his label. And then I started, you know, as his hype man. And, you know, Bless. We he asked you about the video game. <laughs> Yeah, no, well, it, it goes to that. When mm. I finally got the opportunity to put out my first project here in Canada, mm. we did a promo tour with Lloyd Banks mm. when G-Unit was super Lord, hot. Lord, yeah. So we did like 12 or 14 cities everywhere in Canada. And they invited me to come up to the radio station in Vancouver, mm. yeah. where EA's development center was in like the suburbs of Vancouver. Okay. And I spit this freestyle on a whole bunch of 50 cent beats, because that's yeah, yeah, what was yeah. hot at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I guess it got a, a bit of a buzz. And they did like a, a New Year's recap show of the top freestyles of people who came up there. Yeah. And they played my shit. And somebody from from the from EA Sports from the video game company called the station 
like, yo, can you get us in contact with mm. dude? Oh man, that's so. Cool. Do you they, think they needed a white guy and they just like demographics? Nah, or nah, it's like, they told. I spoke to the guy personally, and I was at first I thought it was somebody was fucking with me. Mm. So you know, they called my label and they got my number. Yeah. And then they called me because the, the radio station had the labels. And I'm, you yeah. know, like you said, everybody went through the labels and yeah. shit. So then like they called me and he's like, you know, this is so-and-so from EA. We'd like to talk about putting you in this video game. And I was like, <laughs> who's this? I thought it was one of my boys <laughs> fucking with me, yeah. you know? So uh, he was like, nah, no, nah, it's for real. And then he was like, look, like we're developing the game in Canada. There's no Canadian artists in the game. Okay. You're a great freestyler. We just had this fun idea to put one Canadian in the game mm. and you're, catchphrase will be like you think you could freestyle with bless they brought that to me mm. um and uh i was like uh sure <laughs> like, who crazy, says man. no to that yeah but the full circle thing was where they were like we have to get the approval of def jam because you know mm. you're not signed to def jam or whatever yeah. so i'm like okay well just, just let sign me, me to def jam <laughs> you know no, i was like there was two separate entities so i'm like you know let me know if you need anything and they said that uh, Kevin Lyles, who was the president at mm. the time, remembered me mm, from a from meeting that he had oh, with shit. me and they never signed me. And it was like a crazy, that was a story on itself. But he was like, yeah, I remember him. He's, he's, you relate to that meeting. He's no, no, that wasn't, that was with <laughs> LA Reed. Fuck, that was a big mistake. But he remembered me and he signed off on me and then it happened. But all Tight. those years before, I had like camped out. That's what Lemmy was talking. I camped out in front of Def Jam for like a couple of days trying to bump into somebody. That's crazy. And when we finally did that, we got our meeting and I flew back to New York for this meeting and I was all excited. Mm. And like five minutes in the meeting, I spit for, you know, Kevin Lyles and everybody's like, okay. And, the, you know, it's pretty tense in the room. And yeah. he's like, he's like, I fuck with it. I see it. I see it. Guy gets a call. Foxy Brown was mad about you know, not being on a soundtrack or some random mm. shit. He goes crazy. He's like, fucking bitch. Da -da -da. He goes nuts, slams the phone. He goes, sorry guys, I got to reschedule the meeting. Damn. And just like that, my dream of being signed to Def Jam was oh. gone. And of course we never got a meeting. So I was so hurt. I was so like crushed, yeah. uh, you know, after that meeting. And then like five years later, the video game opportunity happened because that didn't happen. That's crazy, man. So full circle. And like I said, it's a very long story, but definitely the Def Jam shit was just one of those opportunities that, I mean, you're, you're, you're in the business and I'm sure you've seen mm. your brother go through a gazillion things at this point. Yeah. There's so many opportunities that almost happen that yeah. could happen that you mm -hmm. have to teach yourself not to get excited about anything. Dude, you know, yeah, that's how I, I am. I'm just like because <laughs> nine out of ten times it doesn't happen. Yeah. And the Def Jam game was just one of those things that ended up happening. And I, 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 feel I was supposed to be in a uh, an episode. I had a, a YouTube show back in the day. Mm. That was very popular. We were supposed to go to Usain Bolt's restaurants. He's got a chain in Jamaica mm. and film with him in his kitchens. And nice. like three days before it happened, fell through. No Usain yeah. Bolt. I mean. That one hurt. That was. Be, like, I feel like being in the industry, um, you kind of realize that um, the opportunities you get aren't necessarily going to, they're not going to pan out the way. Usually they don't they pan out at all. It's like. Man, I don't want to talk shit about the Junos, but I got nominated at the Junos, mm -hmm. and I was like, I feel like I remember I got the that best couple, how, how, like two, three years ago, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah, seeing that three years ago, I think. But and that's like, dope onto itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but I was like, I itself. feel like I, I got the be the best record. Mm -hmm. It was like, who was who was on there? It was like uh, Claremont the Second, um, Tory Lanes, which eventually won because obviously it's Tory Lanes. But I was like. If the Junos want to make it actually relevant, mm. they would give it to me mm. and not give it to Tory Lanez, who has one song. Literally, it's like best rap album, and it's the Shooter's record, like <laughs> the Shooter's single. It's always so I'm political. I'm like, damn, like, why, why do you give it to Tory Lanez when and literally I work my ass off in my basement? And if it's a popularity contest, then Drake would just have to be given yeah. every award forever exactly, in relation right. to anything Canadian and there would be no point in exactly. even nominating anybody exactly. else. That's what I'm saying. It's Nobody's like, going to overshadow that. But, but that's you know, the problem it, with 
Canadian the, the Canadian uh, media. It's like I can't deal with them. When it's I started too, uh, dropping records, and this gentleman that I'm going to mention is a good friend of mine, and I love him, and he's a mm. great dude, and he's always been supportive. But every year, Cardinal, Cardinal, Cardinal. Yeah. Every year they give it to Cardi because he's in Toronto. You know, he's, yeah, he's great like friends with everybody on the yeah, committee. Yeah, he's sure. the token guy to give it yeah, to. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Of course, but of course. At, and you know, he was always super supportive. Like we used to do press runs yeah, together. Yeah, shout to Cardi though. I yeah, love yeah, Cardi, yeah, yeah, but ups. I mean, I'm sure he would even agree with me at that point. It was like an exercise in futility, you know, you know, like, yeah, man. but I mean, at the end of the day, this game is about pushing through all that shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? But that's what I'm saying. It's like having all of these like expectations fall mm -hmm. in the water. You're just like not excited about anything anymore. Like, yep. Even, even with my girlfriend, like, you know. Like she, like she tells me, like, oh, like we're gonna do this. Aren't you excited? I'm like, no. I'm like, you know, we You're never like, know no, what I got happen. robbed for my Juno. <laughs> I'm never gonna feel <laughs> joy again. <laughs> it's like, it's like I'm not excited about anything anymore. Like, because yeah. I've I've seen so many things and I've and I've I know how it works. So it's like somebody that doesn't know what actually happens behind the scenes has an opportunity that I get. They go crazy. They go nuts. Sure. For example, I performed Coachella this year. Mm -hmm. And it was like, everybody was like, oh my God, you, you're performing Coachella. It's crazy shit. Montreal, blah, blah. With your brother or separate? No, no, just me. Good for you. Yeah. But it, it was like, That's I wasn't exciting, excited. Though. That's no, exciting. Though. I wasn't. You should be excited. You know what, man? I got over there. There was literally about 50 people at the at the set. And it's like a huge ass stage. Mm -hmm. And like a huge but ass. You're, you're doing it at like two in the afternoon. It's, yeah. It's the first two, time you're doing this. You start yeah. at the bottom of the card. Dues, that's it. Yeah. I, I understand. Yeah, of you're course, not of course. But I'm like, I wasn't excited. It's like I've seen K perform fucking Australia, fucking South Africa, all, all these places. Luke, can I ask you a question? Did you give them a good performance? You gave them 110 when you left the stage. I gave, sure I gave, him, I gave him yeah. a good performance. So then yeah. that's all that matters. That's but all that matters. That's all you can do. At the same time, I'm like, I'm sitting over here and I'm like, nobody's there you know what i mean everybody's somewhere else so oh bro the way i look at it it's like, times. it's like i'm happy that i'm that i'm on there because it's, it's good for my name that's what it is but at the same time it's like bro <laughs> i would have rather you know stayed home or some shit you know for sure it'll it's come true, it'll it's come true. it'll, it'll like, take time man. yeah of course of course right but the, that's the game man i mean bro we've done you know crazy performances like uh, we did a couple years ago just before Prodigy passed. You know, I uh, was a special guest when Mob Deep went to Ottawa or whatever, mm. and it was a small club, and they were producing all their, uh, they were uh, performing all their classics. People were yeah. losing their mind. We rocked five minutes before them. The crowd went crazy. Yeah. That was just a beautiful hip hop moment. I had 30 of my boys on stage. It was a movie. Yeah. And then there's the shows where you go all the way there, and there's like six people standing there yeah. looking at you like you're a loser. Yeah. And you're like, oh, but this is humiliating. That's I still what I'm, have. That's that's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> I still have to like jump around and be like, yo, what's up, motherfuckers? You love this hip hop shit. Head, so let's go. <laughs> I'm like, yo. And then, and then you know what's ironic though. So you give it 110% because you fucking drove all the way to the city for nothing. Yeah. You still give it 110%. Hey, yo, it'd be the small little venue where, yo, people will buy more, 20 people will buy more yeah. merch than a, than a packed house because yeah, people yeah, yeah. really appreciate that. And sometimes... There's like a, a quote that I saw, um, you know, perform to, I don't know what it is exactly, but let's say give it 110% because you never know who's watching. Yeah. Right. And just because it's a small audience, you never know. Yeah. I went on tour with um, FKJ, who's like not at all like my type of music. I didn't know he didn't, like he didn't make my type of music. I thought it was some like groovy shit, mm -hmm. but it's like for like old moms and their kids type of music. Yeah. And I'm here, I'm like, they announced it like they announced the tour like months ago and they didn't have a support supporting act. And two weeks before the tour started, they were like, all right, Lou, we got this opportunity. You could go on tour. And I'm like, oh, this is my big break. Let's go. So I'm like, I gotta fucking kill it. Mm -hmm. I go I go to see a guy in Montreal. He does me like he he makes a mask for me because mm -hmm. I'm like I'm gonna, I'm gonna perform this, Doom shit. this angry ass yeah this angry ass energetic music and then I'm gonna switch up my vibe and take my mask off and it's gonna be like the big reveal and everybody's Ooh. gonna be crazy right Good everybody's idea. gonna go crazy yeah yo first show Vancouver 
I get on stage and I see <laughs> and I see like it's a it's a full house. Soccer moms. Bro, soccer moms, kids on on the dad's shoulders and shit like that. Uh-oh. And I'm like, yeah, put your fucking hands up. And I'm fucking going crazy. And, and to shit. begin with, there's no black people in Vancouver. Yeah, exactly. So, so it's, it's like, extra soccer mom. Dog. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, damn. And I'm like just staring at the crowd and I'm like, put your hands up. Like, let's go. Like, <laughs> now you sound like bless. Yeah. What's up, motherfuckers? I'm like, keep going. Keep <laughs> trying going. Trying to thug go. the crowd. Turn up, turn up. <laughs> Y'all like this trap shit? Yeah, I like this rap shit. <laughs> Nobody's like vibing at all <laughs> until I switch up the whole vibe of yeah. the show. And they're like, oh, okay, he does take his mask off. Mm. The second show was in Vancouver also. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, all right, let me try the mask again. <laughs> See if it works. I try it again. I go on stage. I hear people laugh. Mm. It's like, That's not what dang. You so I'm like, all right. You know, so for the rest of the tour, I... Didn't put the mask on. I didn't put my wardrobe, whatever. Just came on as a regular as artist that raps or whatever, and then switched up my whole track list, put all the smooth shit, and then it worked out. It but works. it's like, no matter what you expect, mm-hmm. I feel like you never get what you expect. Never. When you think, like, no matter what it is. But like, don't you feel like that's life in general? Yeah, pretty much. You know, pe- successful people are people who become good at adapting quickly. Yeah. Yeah, you know resilience. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in this business, you better be a resilient, motherfucker. Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. still, I'm still like, till this day, like everybody's, everybody's like, oh my god, like lose doing this, lose doing that, and it's just like an image, like literally, I'm still a regular guy. Well, that's important. You know what you what stay I'm humble, still, like, right? A regular dude to. and fucking chilling. You know? I mean, at the end of the day, you know we do this, you know, whether it's the podcast or or, mm-hmm. or producing or making records because it, you love the shit. Because yeah. the shit really makes you feel uh, like you have something to look forward to in life. And you know what's bad That's the about biggest it? Gift. It's like when you get lost in the idea, like you get a, a small amount of attention, and you think you're like, "Oh man, I'm doing like I'm doing good," and I have to conform myself to what th- what works. You know, yeah. you don't want to try new shit because that already worked. Mm-hmm. But then people get lost in your in your like. Um, they get lost in the in the how how can I say this like you know how like rappers get boring mm-hmm. like as you were thinking about fabulous mm-hmm. by not switching always, up their formula yeah yeah they, yeah they don't switch up their formula they don't try new shit mm-hmm. like I I I feel like it worked like the the like for example for my 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 first album like my first uh, mixtape. The the song that worked was a funky song, so I was mm-hmm. like, "All right, I'm make I'm gonna be funky. I'm gonna be the funky dude that raps." Like know? you were on that Anderson Pac kind of yeah, 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 yeah. vibe, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, like Gold Link, Anderson Pac type shit. Yeah, I and got I it. Like, when I, I got it when I checked out yeah. your early shit. So I was like, "Okay, this is gonna work." But then I did my second album and I dropped it with the uh, E1, and I was like, "The label's gonna push me and blah blah and this and that." But it's it all sounds the same, mm-hmm. even though it's a good album to my ears. I feel like people were like, all right, it's kind of boring because it's the same thing. Mm. Nothing changes. Mm. So now for my next album, I'm going to go back to the basics to like basically trying shit and mm-hmm. like trying new stuff, just like trying to make shit work. But you're an artist and part of being an artist is finding your sound and finding yeah. it again and finding it again. Yeah. It's the fans and the labels that try and put that, put artists in that box mm. like this guy's a gangster rapper yeah. this guy's a conscious rapper this guy right. only does boom bap yeah, this guy yeah, yeah. you know what i mean like a lot of people just even for me in in my own career like people always thought because of my affiliations to guru and gangstar mm. that they're always going to hear me on some premier alchemist kind of shit and don't yeah. get it wrong i love that shit we all do yeah i come from that school but i don't only rap on boom bap mm. tracks with scratch hooks like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know obviously you know what i mean any good it was up to you you would though no that's what you want to no, do come on no, no, you don't no, want to no. spit a 16 the bless way <laughs> yeah no but you know i just believe as an artist you could still be lyrical mm. and take chances you know part of the reason people love biggie so much is because puff forced him to rap on r&b samples mm-hmm. and it was something was really refreshing that. he didn't want to do that he wanted to rap on Premier beats mm. but if Premier had done all of biggie shit maybe it wouldn't have had the cultural impact that it did yeah, not to take no away way. from the amazing moment Moments that he had with Prem, mm-hmm. it's just there's it's a sauce. And yeah. as a, as a, as a, as a chef, you're always 
improvising with your yeah. ingredients to make different shit. Yeah. So if you just told a fucking master chef, you made a great cheeseburger once, don't fucking make anything but a cheeseburger for the rest of your career, the guy would be like, is this a joke? Yeah. But as an artist, oh, you had one hit where you talk some gangster shit, we yeah, better not hear you about, do yeah. nothing but that. Yeah. And I think like Kanye catches so much flack, even <clears throat> right now, right, with this Jesus is King shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's shocking that he's trying to reinvent himself and p do the whole religious thing. But bro, that's what the fuck being an artist is. You're not yeah. supposed to be stable. Yeah. Look, at the, look at Madonna. She reinvented herself all the time. Yeah. That's what the fuck people should strive to be able to be. Not, not everybody is as out there as Kanye, yeah. so they don't want to take that risk. Yeah, pretty much. Right? Mob Deep couldn't do a Jesus is King album. Yeah. It was weird. It was counter to their brand, but why does it have to be? Yeah, it's like, but mm, yeah. I it depends on who you are, though. Yeah, exactly. Like, Pharrell That's could get away with say. it. Maybe you can get away with it. Kanye certainly can get away with yeah. it because everybody talks shit about the album. But I and mean, it's number Kanye, one on everything. Kanye's, Kanye works because it works because um, he won't put, put one himself of his, in the box. One of his most popular songs is Jesus Walks. So if he does a Jesus album, it's like, okay, we, we have the old Kanye back. You know what I mean? But it is not. But and he's not, being yeah. very clear yeah. that I won't even perform Jesus Walks with the same words because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. anti-whatever. Yeah. I just think that he's smart enough to keep playing. You know, look. Look how people like 50 Cent marketed himself. Mm. They marketed their campaign on beef with other rappers. Yeah. So they just kept you know, personifying the street shit, the street yeah, shit, yeah, the street yeah. shit. And it worked for them. Yeah. But a guy like Kanye, because he wasn't going to go that route for obvious reasons, he decided, let my art be controversial. Yeah. Let my rebirth be controversial, my metamorphosis, my, yeah. I'm going religious, I'm going crazy, I'm marrying Kim Kardashian, fashion, this, that. Yeah. You want the old Kanye, da, 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 all that yeah. rant that he did. But bro, we're all here talking about yeah, his yeah. art. Yeah. That's fucking dope. I feel like Kanye is the only person that's going to go, like one of the only rappers in like that's going to go down in history like years from now. Mm -hmm. Like people because, are going to say like, oh, like Kanye West. Like, you know how like we talk about um, Shakespeare, you know, shit like that. I feel yeah. like Kanye is going to be one of these people. You know? Yeah. I mean, bro, it took balls for him to switch lanes so many yeah. times and really risk losing a lot because kanye had a lot to lose bro a lot to lose yeah. even with the whole trump shit nobody agrees with him supporting well, yeah. trump I think it earlier but it was high level trolling yeah and it took a lot of balls to risk or was it really trolling like that's that's what's that's what's weird with kanye we never know you never if know. he's actually trolling or not you, you know? never know yeah but that's what makes it interesting you know but yeah. it did take balls whether you like it or whether you know what i'm saying whether yeah. you know i think in hip hop, it was almost suicidal at the time to endorse Trump. Yeah. Okay. Of course. Just because the perception of Trump and the way he talks is so crazy and ignorant. It's not even like nobody wants to stand behind you. You know what's crazy? It's not even it's not even like music. It's just like like the impact that Trump has on on people oh. is like is insane. Not necessarily a good thing at all no, in no. any way, shape, or form. But for Kanye to to you know to be a brother. And to have this voice and being yeah. the prodigal son of Chicago and put that hat on, yeah. boy, that's elephant nuts. Like, yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, some people might have attributed it to him having that like nervous breakdown at the yeah. time, but he's willing to do crazy shit. And it shows how much influence Kanye has that that didn't even really put a dent in his career mm. is mind blowing. It did. It kind of did. I don't listen to Kanye the same way. Like I didn't listen to the Jesus is King album, but he was well, like on to every it, track was, like, was on Billboard, bro. The the Jesus is yo any tra every yo, fucking track let me is tell on you Billboard, bro. bro. Let me tell you something. Anybody that has a music history that was popular at some point and that drops an album, his ev each and every track is gonna be in the Billboard. No, but we just can pull it up. Way, were, he was like in the top of everything. Yeah, for but every just song. just just because the way the way streaming works. Yeah. I feel like everybody that drops an album and that has some sort of hype around it will be number one or have. I, agree with have I know what you mean. It's, it's almost like they have that system. Yeah, it's like now. a rotation, literally. Mm -hmm. Like, like whereas like Tyler's album dropped like not even a year ago, 
where's his album now? You know, mm. like same for Drake. Same for well, Drake is probably the only one that Drake still- benefited from the double album because yeah. he was able to break every record by just having so much more catalog. Yeah, you but, understand but what Drake, I mean? But Drake is the only one that is actually able to stay on a on a chart for so long. It's amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's amazing. So so. I feel like it did put a dent on Kanye's Kanye's uh, uh like career, maybe on his Supporting legacy. Trump, like maybe just on the his fact legacy. That him going crazy, it was like, yeah. oh man, like why did you have to fuck up? Like, <laughs> but maybe on his legacy, we'll have to wait, you know, five, ten yeah. more years to see the effects. But it certainly didn't hinder his sales, man. His mm. shit's flying, bro. Yeah. Not just music. But I everything. feel like people like Kanye more just because he's like edgy, not even because of his music. Yeah, because. Honestly, the if prob- I'd been the around him, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have like, advised him to to do any. Of, of course that. not. Of course, nobody not. would have. Yeah, he would have done it still. <laughs> yeah, but, because you know. he's that kind of guy. Mm-hmm. He likes to light the fire. But you know, maybe the Trump shit isn't the best example. But creatively, I think that can be very yeah. uh, interesting. And I just think a lot of like you know, in hip hop, we're so one dimensional. Yeah. We can only digest it like a certain way. Yeah. And it takes guys like Pharrell and Kanye to redefine that yeah. it's okay to go over here. It's okay. Yeah. Like, come on. Did you ever think like a super respected rapper like Kanye would make an entirely Christian album? Like, Honestly, yes. Yeah, me too. Kanye is the only person I would see. Yeah, I guess. Well, yeah, and if no, we, if we on, take away big Christian music, yeah, that's what it's I was, just its that's own what I was scene. about to say. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, if we take away the Chris, the Christian rap scene or the yeah. Christian scene in general, yeah, I I think Kanye is the only person that oh, is yeah. not like in that scene that would actually yeah. make an album, Kanye or Pharrell, as you know. Mm-hmm. As soon as I saw the Sunday service shit taking so much um, life. That's like trial and error, technically. Because it's like, he wants to build a church and, you know, he wants to do all these things. But it's like, imagine if nobody really cared. Would he actually have done the the Jesus is King album? Well, they cared because of his stature, right? Yeah. But I just mean, it's kind of funny to hear, it's such a fucking hoe. I love yeah, it. And then I'm your a, next single. I'm is, a sick fuck. I like my dick sucked. Yeah, I like, like to, yeah. to, I will, I'm never going to curse in my rhymes. That's yeah, what he said. But it's like, do we actually believe him? No, but isn't it better? <laughs> isn't it better to troll like that as an artist than to like incite violence and street beefs and perpetuate shit? Yeah, that's but that's what I was saying about that that's what I was needs. saying about artists in general. It's interesting. It's an like, interesting marketing. Yeah, point. whether it's like paint, uh, like paintings or or fucking scripts or movies or etc. No matter what type of art you do, when you're at that level. You could do whatever you want, mm-hmm. and people have to perceive it the way they want. Mm-hmm. It's like Banksy. Banksy, basically, I feel like his art is like a mockery. Mm-hmm. He recently dropped a, a a website where anybody could buy a Banksy piece for um, five hundred bucks. Wow! Right? Anybody? Wow! But the thing is, you have to write your name. You have to write the reason, and and you have to write the reason why you want the piece. Mm. And it's like. Why does art matter? Mm. And it's like, you could, you know what I mean? It's like a mockery when you think about it. It's yes. like, and then he, he, he put a bar on why and he says, does art matter? Mm. So you're like thinking like, is he, is he going to troll us or is he, you know what I mean? Yeah. He's there to make you question things. Yeah. That's what it is. But that's what art is pretty much. It's like, you, took you always make mouth. people question what, you know, what's next, you know, like, and who's going to decide Who's gonna actually decide um, who who gets the the pieces or not? Is a stand up comedian. You know what I mean? A stand up <laughs> comedian reads the answers and he's like, "All right, this guy deserves it." And then he does a background check. You know what I mean? They yeah. do a background check to make sure that you're not super rich or wealthy. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Or you're not some art collector. Yeah, exactly. Who was like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like some like when you're at that level where you don't need. Like where where your your popularity is like no matter what you do you can actually have fun, yeah. have fun with guys it. guys I've been in a position where I had a show and we always used to dictate the tempo and then it became a time where we didn't dictate the tempo anymore and we kind of followed suit and that's when you never get it back and you got to switch your whole flow up you got to do something completely different because mm. if you're at that level that Kanye level where you dictate what they want yeah you can do whatever the fuck you want yeah 
right? Pretty much. I, I had a famous cooking show, and we were the cooking show. We told everyone what they were going to do, and everyone else tried to do. And then slowly but surely, you can't be on top forever. Mm. It, it is what it is. Yeah. You know? But as an artist, I don't believe it should be about being on top forever. It should be about constantly reinventing yourself right. and making important art. So that's important. Impactful the art. Yeah, yeah, pretty Because much. you might have a certain brand of hip hop that speaks to you more and vice versa, but real art should make you think or at least invoke some sort of an emotion. And you know what's crazy? Is that the artist doesn't think about that when, he, when they make their art. You know, it's, you, you get what I mean? Of course. When it's you like, overthink it, it you has fuck to it be up. natural. It oh, has yeah. to be like, it's like you have to be gifted. Yeah. Take, like, you think Salvador Dali thought about this is going to be super impactful for me. No. You know what I mean? Picasso, He's just whatever. trying shit. Yeah, he was like, All And right. the people interpret what's impactful. He was impactful. like, I'm doing whatever the fuck I want. And if you like it, you <laughs> like it. If you don't, you don't. But there's no other way to make real art. Yeah. Or else it's not art. Yeah, you exactly. said it before with it's the a, smoke a joint and like make the keys exactly. dance. You know, that's exactly what it exactly. is. Bro, I'm, I'm in the studio four nights a week of my life for the last decade. <laughs> and that's all I do is just play around with, 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 you know, different chords with my partner. And sometimes I'll say a joke and we'd be drinking and you say a joke. So oh, that's a punchline. Yeah. And sometimes you just dumb out and you don't think about anything. And the entire song basically comes like one big freestyle. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. you go back and you refine it and you clean it up. Yeah. I, I want to ask you like, what's your writing process? Like you go in the studio and then you just, it's, it's so weird. I feel like I'm interviewing you. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> it's a conversation. It's a conversation. It's not an interview. It's a conversation. But it's um, like, you know, you know, like the way I do it is basically I'm like, I sit down, I listen to the beat, and then I I close my eyes, mm. and then the first line that pops up, actually, I listen to the beat, I take out my phone, and then I jibber over it just to get the flow of it. And then yeah. switch, like I, I switch the, the jibber for words, Yeah, and I have the when I have the first line, everything comes, like the first line I feel like is the most important. You know who does that? Po- you know who? who does that? Who? Timberland. Timberland does that religiously. Mm. I was in the studio with his artist back in the day, DOE. They had that um, record with Kerry Hilson. They won a Grammy for it. Mm. Um, um, baby, girl, da, 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 yeah, da, 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 whatever. So mm. he had showed me that that is the process that Timberland taught him, mm-hmm. where you basically, you get the cadence and the melody, and yeah. then you say gibberish, and yeah. then you fill it out. Yeah, exactly. Um, Michael Jackson. They have those like old uh, yeah. thriller tapes yeah. where it's like studio sessions. You see them do that. But I find that's really effective for me personally when it comes to like writing hooks mm. or more, um, uh, you know, uh, melodic music, you yeah. know, like if I'm trying to write records for other people or whatever, yeah. um, or just something more eclectic. But when it comes to some like rhyming, rhyming, like bars, yeah. um, once upon a time when I was a kid, Every time I want to, like in my in my heart, I want to out rap Big L and Big Pun and Nas. Yeah. Like I want to, like I don't I don't want to waste one inch of that verse. Okay, it's the so, same for me. It was the same for me at yeah. some point. I was like, I need to make the um, maximum impact. Yeah, like I have to listen to it and, I'm, and I have to be like, God damn, like I fucking killed it. You know what I mean? But I have to force myself out of that box. Because it's not always the best thing for the record. Yeah. And as, as I progressed, I started to try and challenge myself to go into the booth with maybe, like you said, like one or two lines, like a, just a, a starting point mm. and reverse engineer. Yeah. Where I forced myself to go, you know, four lines, you know, and yeah, then yeah, yeah. stop and analyze it and go another four. And then I got better and better at yeah. not. So I never really was writing. I either had the whole shit in my mind completely created that I'd gone over so many times that I'm just going to do it in one take or completely unprepared, which was terrifying when I started doing it because I was so technical and I had to like break myself out of that mold of always having to be so technical. And then I saw Kanye do an interview where he said, uh, feeling is more important than perfection. Yeah. Of course. You know, and I started forcing myself out of that box where every verse has to be tight, 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 tight. Yeah. You know, and Biggie was great at that. Mm -hmm. Biggie, to me, Biggie has the greatest flow of all time because of the way he was in that playful pocket. Nobody could be as playful. Nas 
is maybe, my, I would say Nas is my favorite lyricist, but he mm. never had that Biggie cadence. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. Jay was an incredible in between of the both. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what made these guys exceptional. Yeah. Can you I, know? can I, can I uh, say something that no one ever says? And sure. I'd love, I'd like your, both your opinions on it. Jay got that crown. Jay got that spot. Jay got a lot because a couple guys died. <laughs> right? I, I don't, I don't nah. believe that. No? No. I, I think he slid right in there because there was an opening. No, I think when he put out Reasonable Doubt, Biggie was in his video. They were happy to be around him. I think he already had that on the underground. Okay. He was already uh, contending for a spot. I get what you're saying, though. I think his yeah, could have been but it's too easy a it conversation to have yeah, for sure. because it would be right what you're saying had Jay not been the shit time, before they died. I remember you know what's a time. crazy. Go. I'm sorry to cut go, you go, off, go, go. but you know what's crazy is you, like we know how Diddy like does one album, two albums, and then cuts the the artist off. You know what I mean? Imagine if he would have done the same with Biggie. But he would, would it, never. We don't know, though. Because That's of the That's what impact. I'm saying. We don't know. Well, I'll tell you one thing that we do know. Craig Mack, bro. Craig Mack. You remember Craig Mack? Of course. Bro, Craig, where's we Craig Mack now? We used to do shows on his Did freestyle. Rest, on his, rest, uh, in, peace. rest yeah, in peace. Oh, shit. But, yeah. but here's the thing. But here's the thing. Shit. Craig Mack and Puff never got along. Like, mm. uh, supposedly, Craig Mack and, and Puff would bump heads, and he didn't want to listen to Puff's direction, and Puff was probably controlled. Supposedly, free. Puffy wasn't allowed in the studio when, when he was So you already him. know that's not going to last. But you're going to tell me. Puffy would never backstab one of his best homies. You're gonna tell me. Of course, he would. Me. Of course <laughs> he would. That's what I'm saying. I mean, listen, like, listen, you expect him to I, do that. I, I, I wasn't. I wasn't. You know, present to any of these things, and I don't know any of these guys personally. But I would just speak on my experience in the music business. Mm. I've seen a lot of people doing what's convenient for them and what works for them. That's what I'm saying. So I would agree with you in that respect. But big, from what I heard, like I saw a lot of you know different. Uh, conflicting stories about it kind of already wanted to start his own label and move away from bad boy mm. so had he not been cut down in his prime you're right maybe he would have left puff yeah but i don't think it was the latter i don't think puff wanted him to leave so. maybe not at that time but imagine if his was it third record fourth record third he dropped two albums or three albums two two right two, two and like a leftovers plate yeah but that doesn't count while he was alive yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so let's say Actually his third won. album wasn't as yeah, yeah like imagine if it it wasn't that hot so you're saying would biggie have been turned into coolio <laughs> would no, it have man, been coolio like, maybe 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 or would he have tur yeah. turned into what dmx where dmx is at or whatever who yeah, knows yeah like yeah dmx is a perfect example okay who, who knows? knows who knows but one thing that we can say is uh, Jay-Z's business acumen mm. was Eon's past Biggie's business acumen. Biggie was an artist who was super talented, who received a lot of direction from his yeah. label and had very little control over his business. Jay, a completely different beast. Yeah. You know, he was... But that's why I'm saying... To, I, to, said it. I said yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you straight up, I remember there being names like Cormega and ah, Nas, and, and AZ, and there was just a lot of names in that in that yeah. same vein, and Jay-Z, yes, his business he, was He went and grabbed that ring as being it. the king of New York. But what I'm explaining to you is he was the only one positioned except for Nas to grab that king of New York, because mm. it would have been Nas if it wasn't him, and that's what that rivalry was about, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But the reason Jay grabbed it and Nas didn't is because I think Jay was willing, a lot of people forget after Reasonable Doubt, he did a lot of records that were, even Dame Dash said it, they were like, eh, mm. love me, baby, dun, 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 dun. people forget that Jay-Z. Yeah, yeah. They only remember what they want to remember. Yeah. He took a lot of risks with that you know, credibility, which was so important more then than ever, to get, to that commercial status and the hard knock I, life shit yeah i really can't say because you know i can't predict the future or anything like i don't know maybe he wouldn't have been the number one guy maybe he would have been the number two guy if mm. if big hadn't passed but he positioned himself his business was in order better than anyone super. But i'm saying as far as the music he was, goes it was all kind of like a blur back but then. he was best it, i w what i say is that he was best suited to take that spot. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's that's what happens in this business. You know All right, I mean? let me ask you this question now. Do we actually think mm. Tupac mm. is up there? 
Oh, man. That's the real question. A lot of people hate my answer because I met Pac when I was- I feel like I'm going to agree with you. Uh, yeah, I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like we have similar musical tastes. Yeah. Um, I met Pac when I was 11 years old. He was the first superstar I ever met. And he was so nice to me. Mm. And he was always in my mind because like, I had that great uh, encounter you know, yeah. experience with him. Um, but I would agree with you, man. When Biggie was out and Hove was out and Nas was out, I wasn't checking for Pac in that way. And it, this is pre-East Coast, West Coast beef. Yeah. Because obviously I was an ignorant East Coast, East New York, mm. Brooklyn, boom bap, diehard hip hop yeah. head. I wore motherfucking Air Max 95s and 95 with army pants mm. and champion hoodies. You know, like yeah. that's what we were on. I Militant hip hop shit. <laughs> and and um, I think Pac was ahead of his time. Yeah. And I think he was an amazing poet. And I think that his music resonates so much to this day because of his writing style. Mm. But at the time, it definitely flew over my head because I wanted to hear that big L. I wanted that pun. Yeah, I didn't, yeah. you know what there's I mean? Something about, there's something about New York, like New York music yeah. that like resonates so much with me for some reason. Maybe it's the, funk, the funkiness of the flow. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's a different animal. I felt like a lot of the production that Pac picked was very minimal yeah. and very scaled down and not as evolved as what was making me excited out of New like, York. Tupac is a great rapper. Oh, yeah. Great rapper. And an incredible... But it's and, like, and, and imagine, if, imagine if... Um, you see how we, we look at Nipsey? Are we going to look at Nipsey the same way we look at Pac? Very similar in my 20 opinion. 20 years from it's now. It's a good question. You know what I, mean? I think good very question. similar. I, I think that think? they're both... You think Nipsey's going to have the up. impact long-term on hip-hop culture that Pac had? I think they were revolutionary. I think they were more about themselves and the men that they were than I believe the music. Nipsey deserves it, but I don't know if he will get it. Okay. I, I think Simply because of the massive catalog that Pac had before he passed away. Yeah. And because his entire career was surrounded by massive okay. drama I and agreed, controversy. Yeah, but, but Nipsey was... His hood, Pop, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah, lived yeah, yeah. all over no the world doubt, no and, and touched a lot of people. Nipsey was so Maybe, cemented in his yeah. hood and his in his area that like the stuff he was doing in his community is just as big as anything. To listen, yeah. I think I think that it's it's you know a horrible horrible tragedy that he got cut down in his prime, and I think Man, he would have grown to was, just be bigger uh, and bigger and might have reached a pox status, but. He got cut down so early. It's sad, man. It's knows. honestly... Uh, it's man. unbelievable. It was really shocking. Yeah. Yep. That all these years later, we didn't learn our lesson from what happened to Big and Pac. But I feel for, like Nipsey is like... the Not the last person from the hood that would get shot. You know what I mean? Like I Certainly like maybe nine, the last who deserved it. I feel like 6 9 <laughs> would have got yeah. shot first. You know Isn't what I mean? Isn't it unbelievable... Like, that shit played out the way it did with Six Nine. Yeah, when he was fucking begging for but it. He's, when and he's a, out, he's and a fucked. brother like Nipsey, fuck, it's it's disgusting. That's what I'm saying. When he's out, he's like Six Nine is. You know, it's gonna be hard for him, man. It's gonna be hard. I kind of feel bad for him at the same. It's like because I have a kind heart. I'm not like yeah. I'm not like on some like no, poor man, six, he's a snitch or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Poor nah. Six Nine. First of all, you're a better me, person than I am. Then. To me, it wasn't <laughs> about him being, see what happens. I to me, see it wasn't about him being a snitch. Anybody who's ever spent any time in that world knew that if the pressure gets put on Six Nine, he will snitch. Yeah, of course. A everybody anticipated. Of course, but. He snitched be, like when he had that case with the girl. Like, what a snitch right away. You know what I'm saying? What was shocking to me is how irresponsible he was. Yeah, knowing that if he gets put in a bad situation, he won't handle it properly. Mm -hmm. Why would you put fuel on the fire? Why would you beg people who are being good to you to go and jump off the roof? That's like you come and say, "Hey, bro." come do a podcast with me. And you're like, okay, brother, I'm gonna come. And then you're like, hey, would you mind uh, jumping off the roof and see if you break your legs? Maybe it'll help the views. And you'd be like, what? No. Yeah. <laughs> but 6 9 was like, hey, bro, do me a favor. Go jump off that ledge. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And so He's wild, man. I, I really think though, and me and Lemmy discussed this earlier, that he had, there's something off with him mentally. Mm. Remember I said that many 100%, 100%. times? I said, this kid's not all there. It's not a, a normal person doesn't tattoo their entire face. In the span of like a year and, and a half, body. he switched his whole, life. <laughs> Whatever. his whole body with the same, the same number. And then everywhere. join a vicious gang yeah. and take part publicly. 
Yeah. For views. I mean, you've really lost your mm -hmm. mind or any set. Like, what's the exit strategy here? That's what I, yeah. He's living it. <laughs> Probably just wasn't smart, living, witness like, protection. We gotta get super hot and then die. Witness protection or death? There's Those no witness right. protection for this guy. Yeah, at this point, it's, it's not like, even you possible even, for him. Like, you're gonna. And he signed a $10 million deal, dollar deal or something. Guess shit? what, though? It's not real. Ten, oh, yeah, it's real. Oh, it's real. How much do you think the kind of security that's gonna be required at to least. keep him safe is Ten per million. year? There you go. <laughs> you know? So he's got about five year budget for proper armed bodyguards. Yeah. And then if 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 that pony don't don't doesn't go, he's you have know? to fucking shave his head, tattoo removal, move to Cuba, all that shit, you know? Bro, it's ain't none sad, of that man. gonna happen, bro. He's gonna get shot. <laughs> that that security and it's budget. Like, who's like which security is gonna want to work for, for off six months? Off duty police will charge three hundred K a year per guy. You They're gonna three want to four work? guys. Off duty, uh, like off duty or retired, yeah, they yeah. do private security and they have a badge. Nah, but like you know, you're gonna get shot at all the time. Right? Well, not literally, if you're, not if your you're life not, is not, not doing not, that job, is what he's saying. Nah, but yeah. not if his security is actually police. Like Fifty used to do that. Nah, but everybody knew. Hey, that. nobody's gonna want to like keep this guy safe. Oh, I agree you with you. What so mean? imagine what kind of mer top level mercenaries, literally, who are gonna vest up. And be ready for, I think even, for action. Yeah, how like much you does that cost? literally gotta get some like army shit. You yeah, know how much I mean? does that cost? Walk though? with a tank. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's like, gonna cost a million dollars a year minimum well, in security. Yeah. So that sh that that clock and is, your family and your fucking it's real your crazy. kids, your fucking your wife, all it, that. It's an unfortunate situation that I think people glorified to get cheap views, and this was the first social experiment of social media going yeah. horribly wrong. Yeah. Because. Everybody from my train of thought, from an era where you said the wrong thing and you really got banged out, yeah, we were all like, yo, this is not going to go well. Mm. It's just impossible. It's the equivalent of driving up a highway, I think 100 anybody. miles an hour with your eyes closed yeah. and expecting not to have a massive accident. I think, I think anybody was looking at 6 9 and they were just laughing. No, bro. There was a lot of people that were trying to jump on that business model. Really? Oh, shit. If I align myself with the right gang and I show out and I do and too the, much oh, on shit. social media, I'm going to get that wave. But like... He was a, he made himself let's the sacrificial say, Let's word. say like the regular white guy from like the suburbs of... Uh, there was one. Of Montreal. There was one, it's but like, he was American. Uh, His name was Slim Jesus. I was just about, yeah. Nah, Slim Jesus was before 6 9 I know, but I'm saying there was some ass clowns nah, to but come I'm, before him. Nah, no, but I'm him. saying like people look at 6 9 they don't they don't glorify him necessarily. They they think he's a comedian. You know what I mean? They think they, it's yeah, all a joke. I know what you mean. They think they you know they're not laughing with him. And I it's sad because some of 6 ix music is actually good. You know what I mean? <laughs> Some of his music is actually good. But, it sounds like some MOP shit but, from like back in the day. You know but, what I mean? I, I told the I, energy, I'm, like Hey bro, I'm a big MOP fan. I get the energy, that rah rah, yeah. that fucking but a lot of people forget just before he came out as a six nine we knew. He was like dressing like a goth weirdo and yeah, like yeah, doing yeah, other yeah, yeah. shit. So he was not all there. He handed out it was well doc, he handed out bandanas on the fucking set. And was like, hey, like I know you guys are are this crew. Do you want to be in this video? Yeah. And then it went viral, and everybody thought it was the greatest situation. Like yeah. he thought he had a cheat code, but they warned him at Hot ninety seven. They warned him, Fat Joe. A lot of people warned him, like, yo, you can't move like this and survive in the real world. Yeah. And then on top of it, you're begging for trouble. It was mind blowing at the time, and I think he's really lucky that. He's alive. He's alive already. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he pissed a lot of people off and shit on a lot of codes that a lot of people live by, even on the music industry side, on the street side. And, you know, if you were to say, hey, yo, I want to make a couple hundred grand today, you know a way to do it? Mm. A stupid person could go into a bank and stick up the bank. Yeah. Why wouldn't you do that? It's a suicide mission. Yeah. You know it's not going to work. Yeah. And that's the reason most people didn't do what Six Nine did. They yeah. knew it was a suicide mission. Yeah. So it's kind of, he's kind of a bit of a weirdo to me that he didn't realize that things would play out really, really fucking badly. I mean, I think he knew low key. I think he knew it was gonna. But do you have no sense of self preservation or no sense of danger? I think Some it's people no just sense. don't give a fuck. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that, that's it. Some I people think just don't care. But wouldn't we call that mental illness on some level? Yeah, it is. 
It's like somebody like, that call goes it for what it is. Room. Just because he's on social media and he wears a gold chain doesn't mean he's not mentally disturbed. Yeah, no, there's exactly. There's something not right. With exactly. The guy, no, he's he's you know? crazy, bro. He's this like, is really crazy. He's actually bro. crazy. Like, he's I'm, really I'm, crazy. You remember that um, Breakfast Club interview? Like you could tell, like he's not all there. No. Anyways, and I felt like it was very irresponsible for a lot of people to fuel that fire. But at the same time, there was people like Ebro who I saw, mm -hmm. like Angie Martina. I saw a few interviews where people were trying to kick game to him and be like, "Yo, like come off the ledge." Yeah, but it's like he's at the top of the game. You know what I'm saying? Like doing what it, what he does. Nobody told him to do otherwise. Yeah. Now, when he's big and he's making millions, some some radio host is gonna tell him like, nah, like stop doing that. You're gonna get in trouble, or whatever. I get they it. Care. And well, then, well, the fire <laughs> was already blazing. Yeah. Right? So it's like it's already fucking. done. Like that's why he's popular anyway. Like mm -hmm. if he would have made regular music, nah, never. Nobody would have ever, ever put him on a platform. You know, ever. But so. you know, people have two different kind of goals. If you look at hip hop as a lick, as a quick hustle mm. that you just want to get in and get out, that's a whole different thing than from what you know my perspective of what I want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. I've never been interested in making a clown of myself to make a couple dollars off of music because yeah. to me, this shit is spiritual. This is my religion. Yeah. You know what I mean? You wouldn't spit on God or on your religion for a couple bucks. Yeah, I would I mean, never do that to I'm pretty sure he doesn't know anything about probably, music anything. Probably in general. Not. You know? Anything about anything. 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 Yeah. So if his goal was that, then he maybe did that's I. What, maybe that he wanted <laughs> to be you know famous. What I mean? like, it's like, maybe he wanted to be famous. Like, yeah. You know how like... Um, Magnota, like the the fucking, what was his goal behind killing that fucking the the Asian dude? Mental illness. Men, nah, I mean the goal was to be famous, but the, the mental moment. illness got in the way, obviously. Yeah. But his his goal was to be famous. 100%. So like people will do anything to be famous. You know what I mean? Isn't that the saddest and social then, comment? And then that's you add no value to life. He actually doesn't care about your life or anyone around yeah, he him. Wants, he just, all he wants to do. But is guess be what, famous. guys. None of that would happen if they're not mentally ill. Because a normal Fine. person yeah. is not willing to do all that for anything. It's Fine. true. It's because true. they understand how insane it is. You yeah. know? And that speaks to a broader topic, which may be all the social media is shifting people yeah. with anxiety and depression into going overboard. Yeah. You know what definitely. I mean? It's like there dangling a, a stake in front of a pit bull. You want this? You want this? Go go go! Do this and film yourself. You want? I mean, it's fucked up. But who ends up doing those things? Impressionable people who are younger, who are really impressionable high. people that don't come from a, a solid background. Yeah. You look at uh, Brigoli, Daniel Daniel Brigoli, bad, bad baby. Like yeah. that's sad. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, sad yeah, yeah. to me. I mean, I I, I watch it and yeah. I laugh and I watch I like, poke at the monkey in the zoo kind of thing. But it's wrong. It's like but everybody's you're... poking at the monkey. Yeah, it's wrong. Mm. And is that what our is that what pop culture is becoming? Just like chewing people up and Pretty spitting much. them that's, out and watch them crash and is. burn online. That's really what it is. Yeah. And then there's like the the sane people. Like it's entertainment, you know. But too high a price to pay sometimes. Yeah. And we have to figure out as a culture where that line is. Where I, you're you know like, what? I think it's a personal balance that you need to figure out for yourself how much shit you can take at, on course. a daily basis. Of course. I unfollowed every stripper on Instagram recently. I felt great about it. It was an important move. Did you find God I know. Like I wake Kanye? up in the morning. I'm a happier person <laughs> without seeing that much ass from the strip club the night before. I'm a better person because of it. You should stop jerking off altogether. Yeah, then you, do a jerk you might off. become a famous seen. boxer. But do you know boxers don't have sex or jerk off before a of course, fight? Of course. Of yeah, course. You should try that. I'm you're not probably preparing for a fight. Much. I'm just saying I want to be a <laughs> Let me I person. understand your point is you're jerking off too much. <laughs> so back to... <laughs> I'm just joking. So back to you, bro. Um, <laughs> when you said road manager... That hat that you yeah. play as a role manager, was that for your brother's projects yeah. or for other? For, for my brother, pretty much. So when your brother first started really popping, you would travel with him a lot. Talk yeah, to so me about I, some I was, of those experiences. I was at school and like my mom, well, Kay, Kay was on tour and then my mom was like, yo, and you'll never hear a, a Haitian mom say that ever. She'll be like, she was, uh, she, she said, Kay needs help. You need to go help him. You could quit school if you want. And I'm like, wow. Oh. Say say less. Say less, yeah. say less you're, go. Like, you're like, wait a minute, Ma. You mean I get to go on rap tours instead yeah. of sitting in class? Pretty much. And ride this incredible and you know wave. It's like there was only like a year left in my for my diploma. I to left be like school a, to do music too. Account, uh, accountant, you know what I mean? I wow. would have been an accountant right now, you know? <laughs> it's like it's crazy. <laughs> but then But that's the path. It's, you were supposed to go then. Yeah. She saw yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
not well. So talk to tell me some of some of the crazier stories. Honestly, some uh, some things that stuck out to you. Just a great moment, a crazy moment. Honestly, man, there wasn't any crazy moments because K is very, like, Chill. very mellow. Like he doesn't do anything. He doesn't want to go out. Doesn't want to. One of one of the things I've done with K was probably go to like a, the craziest thing. Well, not crazy, but it's like, yeah, it's whatever. But um. I went to like an Oscar after party because he was DJing over there. Dope. Like seeing all these like celebrities and all these actors and, you know, Drake was there. Like uh, Jimmy Iovine, again, everybody was there. Like, and, and the actress that won um, best, uh, best Female Actress that year came up to me and she started talking to me like about mm-hmm. nothing, you know, like just talking about, just talking, you know? And I was like, I didn't know who she was. And then somebody came up to me and she was like, do you know who that is? And I'm like, nah. And you're like, oh my God, she won the fucking, she won the award. And who the, was it? Um, you still don't know, know that movie. Um, <laughs> I, I, he still doesn't I, know I who saw it is. the movie. I saw, I don't know her name. Now we know your, tr- I, your story's true. I saw the movie. <laughs> no, that's great. And, and the you name, know what? I, I don't know the name, but it's the, the movie's called um, Three Billboards at uh, Ebbing, some, like Missouri, some shit like that. But it's an amazing movie. Amazing actress. I didn't know who she was. She came up to me, like started talking. I was like, okay, like, you know, cool. And then, so that must have really motivated and inspired you to really like be like, yo, I got to put my all into this music and make sure I it's, continue yeah. down this path. But that was like years ago, right? That was like two or three years ago. Mm-hmm. And I feel like these moments kind of, kind of blur mm. your, your, your focus. Mm hmm. Cause it's like okay, what do I like? What's the formula to be famous right now? Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. And like, you focus on what's actually popping right now instead mm. of like trying to innovate and trying to make something that you love. You yeah. know what I mean? That could be a couple of years from now before people actually catch on. Yeah. Sure. So and I'm unfortunately, like, the the path to success and notoriety isn't always paved with having the best music. Yeah. Mm. As we can see with all of these conversations. Exactly. Sometimes it's, you know, you got to have a little circus going on around your name and then just feed them some music. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, I, I was like, at some point, I was literally thinking, like, should I do a scandal? Should I try to, like, I have to get my social media followers up? And, all, you know, that's yeah. what, that was the, the, the motive. But I'm like, you're getting away from what you actually like. That's right. And mm-hmm. I started, got into a depression. All of that, like, you know what I mean? Like, oh, bro, I know what you mean. Like, bro. Everything falling. I on know my what back. you mean. Where you where you wake up and you feel like, damn, the the magnitude of how heavy what I'm trying to lift up. You just want to go back. To yeah, sleep. you don't want to chase a hundred people. Just want to lay in bed, yeah. watch TV, fucking watch series, and, and you shit. put a lot of pressure on yourself because that's your baby. Yeah, and then you're like, you damn, don't want to like, neglect your baby. You feel like a fucking idiot. You and know? you know, the thing with me is like, I go to the studio like once every every month i would say i have a i have a like a home studio but it's like i want i want the best quality for sure mm-hmm. but i go to the studio once every month and i'm like damn like is this why i'm not getting big is this why you know sometimes in my opinion bro it's just timing yeah sometimes it's just timing sometimes you're ahead of your time and sometimes it clicks but it plays with your head <sighs> Like the, these Big goals time. that you have play with your head. So like I'm I'm staring at I'm I'm watching like Kendrick Lamar and I'm watching Kendrick Lamar is like my favorite rapper of all time. Mm-hmm. But Kendrick Lamar, J Cole, all J I D, all these rappers mm-hmm. that I've seen push the end personally, creatively, like personally do their thing. Yeah, and I'm like, damn, like how the how the hell did they get there? You know, mm. and I'm like, okay, well maybe they just stuck to what they like and. They did things that they wanted to do and shit like they that. They did, but there was a little bit of luck involved in the timing. Yeah. You know what I mean? That, yeah. uh, you know, a Dre took an interest in Kendrick because Kendrick was a great artist before uh, Dre put put that light on him. Yeah. But it took for that, you know, that, that, that thing to click for all of us to be able to discover him. Speaking of, you know, how they got there, um, talk to me a little a little bit about, you know, a lot of people always wonder how your brother 
got to where he is. Mm. Um, tell us a little bit about you know his story from your perspective, being you know his younger brother, being mm. so close. How did it happen for you know it's uh, like, a kid from Longueuil, suburb yeah. of Montreal? For those who aren't from Montreal, yeah. um, get to be at a point where he is now. What was his journey like? What was his path like? It's like. He said, fuck everything except music. You know what I mean? That's fuck what school, it takes. Fuck uh, eating. Fuck uh, going out. Fuck That's all of that. Takes. Music. He gave in his, his uh, 10,000 10, hours. Is that what it is? Yeah. 10, yeah. So he gave in that. that Early. This time. Up yeah. front. Literally, at the age of like, I feel like eight, 18. He was 18. I was 16. And we, we, we used to take fake IDs to go like. I used to take his ID to go to go like to the clubs and see him perform because like my mom wouldn't let him go without me. And it's like I would take his ID, go with his ID, and he had the beard, so like it didn't matter. Like they wouldn't they wouldn't card him or whatever. So, like, man, like I feel like maybe the 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 it's weird, man. When I think about it, it's, it's really weird how how it happened. Facebook, bro. Facebook, that's how it happened. So K K started making beats, putting him on um, fucking Bandcamp or whatever, mm. and then from Bandcamp, some random ass Italian dude noticed him and then put him on his blog. He got big in Italy. Well, not big, but let's say like a couple thousand followers or whatever. In it's Italy. a good buzz for yeah, that yeah, time yeah. for sure. Yeah, and then that blog. Um, and then ear ear uh, ear milk, is that is that oh anyways one of these blogs like one of these like s like boom bap soulful like what two little boys, it? fuck two thousand ten okay like because at the time vlogs vlogs they had yeah, big vlog, big pull yeah. right yeah 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 you had those sites that were getting like a million unique hits in a day exactly so if you post something on there it's like you're getting noticed you're getting your followers yeah. you're getting everything up. So it's like, yeah. So basically, blogs like hip hop blogs posted started posting his albums and shit like that. Like he dropped like at least eight albums before hmm. his music actually started getting big. I love that you say that. People overlook that Kendrick was the same. Yeah. When you YouTube Kendrick before he popped. He had like dozens and he dozens. Yeah, yeah. Did he have a whole other name? Well done yeah. by videos. Yeah. You know, it takes it takes time. Yeah, man. So and then we went to this Flying Lotus show and. I remember casing like watching Flying Lotus perform, and he was like, "Yo, this is this is crazy," and like Flying Lotus is really like electronic. I've heard the name, right? So it's like electronic type of music, and K was really into that Mad Lib sounding shit, and he's like, "What if I blend both?" Mm. So he made he made twenty ten was the year of electro and all of that fusion yep. being at the pinnacle. Yep. So he made a remix, the the Janet Jackson remix. Mm. On, on SoundCloud, he put it on, like he did it that night and then he posted it the same night. He woke up the next day. So imagine if he, like you post a track at fucking 5 a.m. That we just demoed tonight. Yeah. And then you woke up, you wake up at, at, at um let's say 2, 2 p.m. And then it's at 50,000 plays. Mm, you know what wow. I mean? So it's like this song blew up and then it keeps going. Like everybody loves this song. And then he, he's like, all right, cool. Like we got this this part done i don't know what to do now now he had a momentum going yeah online and then he did um he did um the tedra moses remix and then from the tedra moses remix he did a, a a album but like an instrumental album and nobody really like knows this one it's like merry making music it's like really like dancey and like i don't know it's hard to explain but then oh actually not it's not even that one it's, it's um ketra toto mm -hmm. It's an EP, five songs. And I remember at the time, and that's, we go back to what you were saying about the expectations. Apparently, Drake heard the album and he was like, yo, I need beats from K, I need mm -hmm. beats from K. And then K said it in the interview. And because he said Drake wanted some beats in the interview, Didn't Drake happen. was like, all right, peace, I'm out. You know what I'm saying? So it's like expectations and then you talk too much and then, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyways, Ketra Toto. And then from Ketra Toto, there was this one track, um, fuck, I forgot the name. The first track, I believe. And then he went to for a show in Halifax. 
that show in Halifax, he met his manager, which is my manager now too, uh, Will. And then um, basically Will was like, oh, like, you don't have any manager? Like, you don't have a manager? Like, I, right, you want me to help you out? Yeah, sure. And then Will had contacts from um, uh, fucking people in Europe or some shit. Mm-hmm. And then they did a, a tour in Europe. And that's what literally blew him up. The tour in Europe, he came back home, did another tour with Jerome LOL and um, somebody else. A grounded slava came back. The homecoming show in Montreal was so packed. I so remember, packed, oversold. I remember, oversold the Belmont, mm. and like forever, like t- till this day, they, they still talk about this this show. It's like it was years ago, like eight years ago or some shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then, fuck, what happened then? And then just tour, tour, tour for like five years straight. So him touring as a DJ really helped. Yeah, I mean, I feel like everybody that tours a lot has some sort of recognition. Yeah, right. as long as you tour and you people see you and they're like amazed by your stuff, it's easier oh, for press to latch on. Without, to. yeah, I almost forgot the boiler room. Boiler room. The boiler room in Montreal is literally what made Kate's career, in my opinion. Wow. Maybe he might say something else because mm-hmm. he did a boiler room in LA before, or maybe after, but. His border room in Montreal, till this day, people send me snaps, like Snapchats or, mm-hmm. or uh, like Instagram, whatever, about me in the video, like next to K, vibing and shit. And it's like the atmosphere of Montreal and the music that K is playing is like crazy to them. They're like, yo, what the fuck? Like, like they want to party like, like us, pretty mm-hmm. much. They want to party like our scene. And that's what basically made K big. They're like, when we go CK, it's going to be the same type of vibe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So so he started really getting on a roll and getting booked crazy at that point. Yeah. Right after the boiler room, everybody was like asking for, for, for K. And what was the breakthrough move uh, business-wise? Because I remember there was some rumors I heard about him working with Rick Rubin. Is that possible? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. How did the, how did all of that come about? Was that just the next <coughs> natural step? or? Um, so the Rick Rubin thing basically happened after he dropped his album. Um, was it after or before? I think before. By the right way, Rick before. Rubin's my number one, like most like uh, high. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, Highest like, regard. Mm. Regard, yeah. As oh, far yeah. as celebrities go, he's number one by far. Really? So uh, he's a music. He's another. It's not even close. Yeah. He's, he's a legend. He's yeah, a he's legend. number one, two, three, four, and five. Like yeah, that's the he's, guy. He's like. He's like legit. I went. I went there too with K when. Uh, when I'm, I'm the one who took the picture of, wow. the, of him and Rick. I was like, oh shit! You like, that's see, that's yeah, a, how you not talk about that on I, the hey, podcast. Man, I, I don't know. I, I forgot about it, man. I forgot. Thank about it. God we got here. So, what was it like? You know, being a young artist, right? Yeah. Growing up, you know, looking up to this culture that we all did, and being in fucking Rick Rubin's home studio like that that's a moment you were in his house it's like not the... it's not his it's not his house he has okay. i think he has two property properties he has one in malibu and then one uh somewhere else but the but one with the like old school truck and so all the, that the, the, the truck that the truck is bob dylan's tour bus that he flipped into a studio <laughs> it's crazy wild fucking and then Rick there's like there's a house on that property and then the house is basically turned into a studio. Okay. But there's like beds and shit. Gotcha. So it's not his actual house. Yeah, no. And I was like too shy to even ask anything. So I was like standing back and like my, my manager was like, don't don't say anything. Just like. It's a lot to soak yeah. up. Yeah. So I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to sit down and stare at the ocean. Like literally you have the view of the ocean. Like It's like paradise. Technically. Yeah, it's great. But um, yeah, man, Rick Rubin is like never wearing shoes. Always in shorts and white tee, long ass beard, listening to music, closing his eyes and just like, not even on beat, just like like a fucking nodding off. <laughs> it's like a guru, just straight up like yeah. Oh man, it's crazy. But what a larger than life character. Ever. Yeah, yeah. Coolest guy ever. Yeah, man, he's he's dope, man. I, I love him, man. So with uh with your brother and Rick Rubin, what happened after that? Did they work on some? some nah, he's he signed a publishing that? deal. He signed a publishing deal with Rick Rubin. Um, it's called Pulse. Pulse Records, I think, or some shit, and then um, from from there, um, basically, when K goes to LA, he has studio for free, pretty much. I think that's dope. I, I think that's what it is, but that's dope. I'm not. I'm really not sure about the Rick Rubin thing, but um, 
I guess that's what it is. And wh- where is he at now? What is he working on? Is there another K? project coming from K? Hey, man. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> I think, Can't leak it out yet? I, yeah, I, I think he showed it to me, and it's coming out really soon. Like, Dope. you could see, like, if you go on his Instagram, you know, you'll get hints. All right. But, uh, yeah. All right. And the obvious question, what's next for Mr. Lou Phelps? Man. When are we going to hear another project from you? Fuck, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm just like working on a bunch of shit right now. I got I got beats from Madlib recently, so I'm Congrats. like huge. I'm just like that's, soaking it up, just like rapping. Changer. I'm like going back to like the New York, like rapping on samples with no drums type mm, shit. You know what I mean? Like the, the minimal shit. Yeah, the Griselda shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that like the the raw the raw shit. I want to go back to that. I want to go back to the roots, because maybe some like you know I feel like sometimes. Um, Artists don't like want to do things just to please the crowd, but I'm like, I need to do shit that I love. Hundred percent. And this is the type of shit that I love. I listen to the 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 raw shit. So I felt like that many times mm. in my career where it's like if I'm not excited about it, I mm. don't even I can't even put this this energy into it. Yeah. I need to feel like this one is special. Yeah. And even if it's not, you know, uh exactly lined up you know it might not be trap or it might not be electro in 2010 or Mm. whatever but you know you still gotta it's gotta excite you first yeah yeah pretty much pretty much Mm -hmm. so yeah man i'm just working on an album i think i'm gonna drop an ep soon with my brother um tony stone one of my homies from planet giza i don't know if you heard of him i really you told me about him i think you did uh you you played with him this summer yeah yeah they're really tight like super dope guys you think you're gonna link with your brother for this project, or maybe? Yeah, I got, I got like the one I'm dropping with Tony Stone. Definitely, it's like I have three songs produced. Well, it's all produced by K, actually. Nice. And then it's K the Tranada next, and Madlib. That's a nice lineup. Yeah. The next album, though, it's gonna be me producing what? Like I'm gonna produce all my shit, and then probably some K beats. I got Kiefer on it. Kiefer is like one of the homies from uh, Stone Throw. Nice. Um. Fuck, who else, man? Madlib probably. I'm saying Madlib, but maybe I shouldn't even say it, honestly. But yeah, man, it's just like a bunch of people, man. You got the beats already. Yeah, I got the beats. <laughs> Can't take them back now. He just he just needs to approve it, but you know, That's we'll funny. we'll figure it out. You know what I'm saying? We'll figure it out. Well, but, definitely, uh, man. Thank you for coming through. Your uh, story is definitely more than inspiring, my brother. You yeah, know, man, good for you. Great talk, by the way. Thank you for success through. to you and your bro and you guys' whole team. We would love to have you back anytime. And uh, me and you will definitely build on some other shit. Oh, yeah. Your boy, Bless. Let me know. The Moment of Truth podcast, Lou Phelps, episode 21. Thank you for tuning in. Peace. Peace.